Now we are already familiar with a couple of reduction reactions of carbonyl compounds, isn't it? We have discussed in the previous chapter on alcohols, phenols and ethers that reduction of carbonyl compounds is one of the important ways of synthesizing alcohols. Reduction of aldehydes using lithium aluminium hydride or sodium borohydride would give us a primary alcohol and reduction of ketones using the same reagents would give us a secondary alcohol. So in this video we are not going to look at these generic reduction reactions where we get alcohols as a final product. Instead we are going to look at two characteristic reduction reactions of carbonyl compounds which are Clemenson and wolf kishner reduction. And unlike the products obtained in the general reduction reactions here, we do not get alcohols in these reduction reactions. Instead, the C double bond O gets reduced all the way to CH2. That is, our carbonyl compound reduces to a hydrocarbon. So let's see what reagents and reaction conditions are involved in these specific reduction reactions. Okay? So let's begin with Clemenson reduction. Here, the carbonyl compound is heated with an excess of amalgamated zinc which is basically zinc and mercury complex in a strongly acidic medium using concentrated HCl. So when we use these reagents the C double bond O gets reduced to CH2. Now the important thing to remember here is that for this reaction to be successful the carbonyl compound must not have any acid sensitive groups because you can see that this reaction employs strongly acidic or harsh conditions here. So if a starting reactant or carbonyl compound has acid sensitive groups like acetals or hemiacetals or epoxides then these groups would hydrolyze in acidic medium and we would end up with a product that would be completely different from what we might have wanted. So that's one thing we need to be mindful of when we deal with Clemenson reduction that the starting reactant should not have any acid sensitive groups. And for those compounds which cannot handle the strongly acidic and harsh conditions of Clemenson reduction, no worries, we have an excellent alternative, which is the wolf kishner reduction. Here again, the C double bond O group of the carbonyl compound gets reduced all the way to CH2 group. So here, the carbonyl compound reacts with hydrazine to form the intermediate hydrazone which is then heated in the presence of a strong base like potassium hydroxide in a high boiling solvent like ethylene glycol. And when that happens, hydrozone undergoes deprotonation to give us a final hydrocarbon with the elimination of nitrogen gas. This elimination of the nitrogen gas is what drives the reaction forward and makes this reaction highly effective. Now we won't discuss the mechanisms of these two reactions because that's not really required at this stage. All you need to remember are the reagents, the specific reaction conditions and what kind of products are formed at the end. Okay? So based on these two reactions that we just discussed, let's solve a couple of questions. So let's look at the first question. Here you can see that we have two different reactions using the same starting reactant which is a ketone. But it has a very interesting substituent which is an acetal. Alright. Now we have reagents that correspond to both wolf kishner reduction and Clemenson reduction, correct? So do we get the same products in this case? I mean, is the structure of A and B exactly the same? Let's find out. Now when this reactant undergoes wolf kishner reduction, where we are first treating the ketone with a hydrazine followed by heating in a strongly basic potassium hydroxide solution, the C double bond O gets reduced to CH2 group. So the structure of A would be this. You can see that our substituent remains unaffected and intact in our final product. What about the second case where a ketone is undergoing a Clemenson reduction reaction? So do we get the same product as what we got here? I mean, is the structure of B same as the structure of A here? If you got this answer, then you must have missed something. Remember, the substituent here is an acetal, which is highly sensitive to acidic medium, isn't it? So what happens in an acidic medium? Our acetal would undergo hydrolysis and would convert back to its original carbonyl compound and corresponding alcohol. So that means in the acidic medium our acetals would get hydrolyzed to form corresponding carbonyl compound and the alcohol which is a diol here. And it is this carbonyl compound that undergoes Clemenson reduction where the C double bond O at both these sides would get converted to CH2. So our final product would look something like this. You can see that the product here is quite different from what we have here. 
in the wolf kishner reduction our acetals are pretty much intact as they are stable in basic medium but in clemenson reduction where we use a strongly acidic medium our acetals would get hydrolyzed giving us an entirely different product this further stresses the importance of wolf kishner reduction which can be used to reduce aldehydes and ketones when they have acid sensitive substituents let's now look at one more question here we need to identify the products a b c and d so you can see that basically we are using the same set of reagents in reverse order in the first case benzaldehyde undergoes a chlorination reaction and where do you think the chlorine would add to will it add to the ortho or para position or the meta position we know that the cho group attached to the benzene ring is actually an electron withdrawing group and because of this electron withdrawing nature cho group deactivates the benzene ring and directs the incoming electrophile which is cl plus ion to the meta position therefore the structure of a would be something like this where we have chlorine at meta position relative to the cho group now in the second step it is undergoing a wolf kishner reduction which means the final product would have c double bond o replaced with ch2 group correct so here we have basically three chloro toluene so ch2h is nothing but ch3 right which is toluene so the final product here is three chloro toluene what about the second case here we are performing the reduction first which means the structure of c would have c double bond o replaced with ch2 here so c would be toluene and when toluene undergoes chlorination the ch3 group because it is an electron donating group and activates the benzene ring towards electrophilic substitution reaction it would direct the incoming electrophile which is cl plus towards ortho and para positions so basically chlorination of toluene would give us a mixture of ortho and para substituted product so the structure of d would be this which is the para substituted product or the product where chlorine is at the ortho position so here again you can see that we get different products in the second case we get ortho and para substituted product and in the first case we get a meta substituted product 